Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody and welcome to my week number one NFL reactions. Today, we're going to take a look at every single game that happened this weekend and react to it as always like we did last year. This is the first video of NFL reactions in 2024. Of course, that being said, you already know what to do. Drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, yeah, hit that sub button because we got a lot of content coming today. We are going to talk Big 12 reactions here on the channel as well. And we're going to talk Big 12 week number three predictions as we look forward to next week. We're going to do that every single day along with NFL predictions tomorrow. And then, of course, we will have our weekly conference predictions for the Power 4 conferences as well, if you guys know what I mean. Thursday, you may have an extra dynasty. Friday, you may have one as well. But... Regardless, let's go ahead and hop right in to these NFL week number one reactions. All right, starting off at Thursday night football, of course, the Baltimore Ravens going into Arrowhead and losing. First of all, we will start off with the visiting team and Lamar Jackson. He was 26 of 41, 273 touchdowns, one touchdown, zero interceptions. A really solid game from Lamar Jackson. I watched pretty much every single snap of this game. And it was a good game to watch every single snap of. Lamar rushing had 122 yards on the ground as well. Was the team's leading rusher. They didn't utilize Derrick Henry a lot in this game. But they really didn't need to. Isaiah likely led the team in receiving at 111 yards. One touchdown on the day as well. He almost got the game-winning touchdown for the Baltimore Ravens as well. It was really the Ravens offense is what kept them in this game. Moving on to the Chiefs side of things. Mahomes does what Mahomes does best. 20 of 28, 291 yards, one touchdown, one interception on the day. He did have that one little interception, though. Not really too much of a factor in the game, if you're asking me. Pikachu was the team's leading rusher at one touchdown, 15 carries for 45 yards. Rasheed Rice was the team's leading receiver. Then Xavier Worthy came up clutch. He had one touchdown on the day as well with Two receptions for 50 yards or so. That one touchdown he had was very, very nice. Good on him for scoring a touchdown. Rasheed Rice, 103 yards, seven receptions, no touchdowns. Travis Kelsey did not look good at all. Three receptions for 34 yards. Wonder if that's a Taylor Swift mindset type of thing. And then the defense for Kansas City did what the defense does best. Chris Jones got the only sack of the game, which, of course, was expected. And, uh, yeah, the Chiefs got the job done and start the season off 1-0. Next up, you have the Packers going into Brazil and falling to the Eagles, who I guess technically were the home team in this one. But, again, it is Brazil. It's a neutral site game. However, Jordan Love did get hurt this game, which I'm very... I'm not too happy about that, but hey, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, Jordan Love got hurt midway through the fourth quarter, I believe. So he is out for three to six weeks. He tore his MCL. So big blow to the Packers as they now turn to Malik Willis. But Jordan Love, 17 of 34, 260 yards, two touchdowns before he got hurt. Play a really solid game, touchdown-wise. And yards-wise, was really good. He did have one interception on the day, which, I mean, technically really wasn't on him, but it is what it is. Josh Jacobs, the newly running back for the Green Bay Packers, led the team in rushing. 16 carries, 84 yards. The one rushing touchdown of the day went to Jalen Reed. Receiving Jaden Reed also caught a touchdown as well. 138 yards. He is the clear-cut number one guy on this Packers team, if you are asking me. And he showed that this week against Philly as well. Kristen Washington also had a touchdown on the day as well, but they do fall to the Eagles. Eagles side of things, Jalen Hurts, 20 of 34, 278 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. He had a pretty okay day in fantasy, only scoring about 22 points, 24 points. If you're asking me, that's not terrible, but it's not the best. My backup quarterback, Baker Mayfield, threw for about 30 points in fantasy. So with that being said, should have started him as well. He did have two interceptions, which did hurt him, but Saquon Barkley on the ground led the team in rushing the newly Eagles rushing or running back. 109 yards, two touchdowns on the day. Pretty solid day for him. A.J. Brown led the team in receiving. 119 yards, one touchdown on the day. And then Saquon also caught a receiving touchdown. Nice little pass to Saquon there to open up scoring for the Philadelphia Eagles. But regardless, they move on to 1-0 in Brazil, and I hope the NFL never plays a game in Brazil again. 
Not a nod to their fans, but again, that those field conditions were not the best, and uh, the Eagles got the job done. Up next, I got a lot to say about this game on the Carolina side of things. Uh, Saints destroying the Carolina Panthers 47-10. to I know I got this prediction wrong. Don't worry. Trust me. I thought they were going to walk in the dome and beat the New Orleans Saints, but it is what it is. However, we look at the Saints. Derek Carr played a heck of a, heck of a game. 19 of 23, 200 yards on the day passing-wise, and three touchdowns throughout the year. If you started him in fantasy, you won your game, which I don't know if anybody did. But if you started him, you won your game as well. Alvin Kamara had a touchdown on the day. 15 carries for 83 yards, one touchdown. Jamal Williams also had a touchdown on the day as well for the uh, New Orleans Saints. Rashid Shaheed played lights out, 75 yards receiving wise, one touchdown on the day. Monroe, I believe the newly added receiver, also caught a touchdown as well. Chris Olave and Jawan Johnson had a touchdown on the day as well, but no Chris Olave in this game, which makes me really, really mad because I started him in fantasy football last week or this week. I could have started anyone else, probably won that game. But with that being said, the Saints get the job done against Carolina, who I got to talk about. So we will start off by addressing Bryce Young. 13 of 30, 162 yards, zero interceptions, and two touchdowns. The dude looked like Peyton Thorne. Yes, he had a rushing touchdown on the day. Peyton Thorne also had a rushing touchdown on Saturday, which we will talk more about in SEC reactions. But the dude can I mean, the first interception... Yes, understandable. Kind of getting early feels out for you guys. But the second interception on was on him completely. The dude he threw the dude five yards behind the ball, five yards behind the actual player, Deontay Johnson, he was trying to hit. And he literally hit the guy, I mean literally in his chest for the intercepting or for the New Orleans Saints. So with that being said, Dave Canales has to do better. And uh, that was the only bright spot of this Carolina Panthers team. Derrick Brown is now probably out for the year, which makes me so mad because we have a healthy defense. We have J.C. Horn back. We have D Dane Jackson on the cornerback, who actually played really well. I thought he played really well, and I'm going to keep going here on this game because this is my team right here. I got to focus on them for a little bit. But Dane Jackson... Played really well defensively. J.C. Horn tried to talk trash to Derek Carr, and it ended up not working because Rashid G literally torched him the next play. But with that being said, the defense played pretty good. The offense, though, whew, they struggled. They got work to do. And uh, if they come out playing like this and Charlotte at home against Jim Harbaugh and the freaking Chargers, who only won by like a field goal, then they're going to have some issues to address. I better expect a win on Sunday. I'm not going to pick it, but I expect a win on Sunday or at least a close game. Because if you get embarrassed like this at home, then you're you're going to be embarrassed for the rest of the NFL season. And uh, you may get demoted to the UFL. But uh, yeah, that is my reaction to Panthers Saints. Let's move on to the next game. Up next, you have the New York Giants falling to the Minnesota Vikings 28-6 at home. I will say, New York did not look good. I'm not going to focus on that part of the game. I'm going to focus on the Vikings for a little bit because I want to emphasize something. Sam Darnold looked really good in this game. Yes, will he look that way throughout the year? Most likely not. He was 19 of 24, 208 yards, two touchdowns a day. He did have that one interception. That was a pick six, but uh, that is okay for them as well. Aaron Jones had a touchdown on the day as well, 94 yards. The newly added running back for the Minnesota Vikings this past offseason. Justin Jefferson caught a touchdown in the end zone doing what he does best, 60-yard receptions. He got everybody the ball for the most part. He even got Jalen Naylor a touchdown as well. Jordan Addison didn't really do much, but it wasn't really needed as the Minnesota Vikings got the dub, and Will Reitgerd kicked about five of those points as well. So Vikings get the win on the road in New York. Will it stay that way? Probably not, but let's move on to the next game. Moving on, you got the Patriots going into Cincy and beating the Bengals. The Bengals and what are expected for them to be a playoff contender and a Super Bowl contender, falling at home with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase to the New England Patriots. Jacoby Brissett, 15 of 24, 121 yards. 
Ramon J. Stevenson, man, he went off. 25 carries for 120 yards, one touchdown. I am so mad I didn't start the dude in fantasy. Generally thought that Najee Harris, I was considering putting him in over Najee, but I thought the Bengals defense was the Bengals defense, and uh, that did not happen. So uh, Ramon J. Stevenson carried this New England Patriots team. Austin Hooper was the leading receiver for the Patriots, 31 yards on the day as well. Taking a look at the Bengals things, Joe Burrow didn't play terrible. 21 of 29, pretty good completion rate, 164 yards. Uh, Zach Moss scored the only touchdown of the day. Jamar Chase, 62 yards, was utilized in a different way. No T. Higgins this week, but again, it is the Bengals. You expect them to be in the playoffs with Joe Burrow, and they fall 1 0, or the, they fall to the Patriots. 16-10 to start 0-1 on the year. Next, you got the Steelers going into Atlanta and beating Atlanta. The Saints may take the NFC South, man. I mean, they looked really good, and Atlanta, on the other hand, struggled. We will talk the Falcon or the Steelers first, though, excuse me, the winning team. Justin Fields, 17 of 2356 yards on the day. Najee Harris, 20 carries for 70 yards. He got a lot of yards and got a lot of carries. But he did score a touchdown, and that's what I need to win fantasy. I did win my matchup in fantasy this week, but we will talk about that when come due time. George Pickens was the leading receiver. Uh, six receptions for 85 yards. I don't think there was an offensive touchdown, as the touchdown came for the defense. But, uh, yeah, Kirk Cousins had two interceptions. One of those interceptions from Kirk was really, really bad. 16 of 26, 155 yards, one touchdown on the day. Bijan, 18 carries of 70 yards or so. And then Kyle Pitts scoring the one touchdown on the day as well. Ray Ray McLeod did lead the team in receiving yards. But, hey, it is what it is. They fall to the Steelers and what a lot of people think, that they're going to win the division. But, hey, I'm just saying the Saints may win it. So, uh, yeah, let's react to the next game. And the next game, of course, is the Texans beating the Indianapolis Col Colts. My boy C.J. Stroud going in there and lighting it up. We will talk about him in a second. This was a very close game. It was a two-point game. One possession game all the way. But Anthony Richardson was 9 of 19, 212 yards, two touchdowns on the day. One interception. He also had 60 yards on the ground and one rushing touchdown on the day. So he put up big-time numbers rushing-wise and passing-wise, and they still lost. Receiving, uh, Alex Pierce led the way with 125 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Dublin also got a touchdown. Michael Pittman was relatively quiet for the Colts as well. But uh, they fall to the Texans as C.J. Stroud was 24 of 32, 234 yards, two touchdowns on the day. Played really well. I love that C.J. Stroud is doing really good. Joe Mixon, 160 yards on the ground, one touchdown. You started him, you pretty much won your fantasy week as well. Receiving Nico Collins led the way, but Stephon Diggs did have the two touchdowns. And, uh, yeah, the Texas offense is firing in all cylinders. And you're going to win games if you put up almost 30 points as well. Even for the Colts, you're going to win games in that division if you put up 30, 27 points a week against your division teams and the teams that you play. So, Colts fans, don't fear. Anthony Richardson is here. But, uh, yeah. Texans get the win in a very, very close matchup as they go 1-1-0. to Up next, and I feel bad if you started this guy in fantasy, Marvin Harrison Jr. and the Arizona Cardinals falling to the Buffalo Bills in a very close game. However, Kyler Murray played really, really well, and I'm expecting them to shock a lot of people this year and do something and make some noise in that NFC West division. Just me. But I think they can do really well in that division. Kyler Murray, 21 of 31, 162 yards, one touchdown. Utilized the rushing game a lot. He had six, uh, 60 yards rushing as well. James Conner had 50 yards rushing and a touchdown on the day. Greg Dortch was the leading receiver for the Cardinals, but they do fall to the Buffalo Bills. Mar Michael Wilson caught the one touchdown. Marvin Harrison, one reception for four yards. My friend started him in fantasy against me, and that's how he lost. So, uh, yeah. I don't know what Marvin Harrison's got to do, but uh, you got to do what you got to do, and the Bills get the job done. As Josh Allen was really played a really solid game, 18 of 23, 232 yards, two touchdowns in the day. Uh, rushing wise, James Cook was the leading rusher, 71 yards. Khalil Shakir caught the one touchdown. Keon Coleman led the team in receiving. The newly added receiver from the draft. And, uh, yeah, the Bills get the job done as the defense stood up big for them come down the stretch. And, of course, the I believe the final game of the noon slate, I could be wrong, but the Tennessee Titans going into Chicago and blowing a 
really big lead. The Tennessee Titans had the lead for the most of this game, and then Will Levis kind of just sold there. He was 19 of 32, 127 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions on the day. Tony Pollard, six or 16 carries, 82 yards, one touchdown on the day as well. Re receiving Calvin Ridley was the leading receiver. Akonwu had one touchdown on the day as well, but they do fall to the Chicago Bears as Caleb Williams, 14 of 29, 93 yards, didn't even break 100 yards, but didn't have to as DeAndre Swift led the way with 30 yards, uh, 10 carries on the day as well. DJ Moore led the team in receiving, I believe. Um, I don't know where that touchdown came from, but I believe their kicker kicked 10 freaking points, and I believe the defense had a touchdown as well. They did have that fumble recovery, which led to them winning the game. So the Bears' defense saved them in this game. Taylor Williams has got to do better, and uh, they get the job done, though, regardless against the Tennessee Titans. Okay, this is the final game of the noon slate. I know that one for a fact now. The Jacksonville Jaguars going into Miami and taking the loss after Tyreek Hill does get arrested. By the way, I want to say, I don't think that was on him for the most part. I get it. He was speeding. But, again, the cops shouldn't have been that forceful on him. They were forceful on everybody around him as well. And, uh, yeah, so that is my thoughts on that one as the Jaguars fall to the Miami Dolphins 17-20 to on that. T-Law, 12, 12 of 21, 162 yards. One touchdown of the day. Tate Bigsby led the way on rushing 12 carries for 73 yards. I like to see that out of the Auburn man myself. Travis Etienne, 12 carries for 44 yards. Did have the one rushing touchdown of the day. Ryan Thomas, I have him in fantasy. He got one touchdown of the day as well, but they do fall to the Dolphins. Looking at the Dolphins side of thing, Tua, after getting a nice contract this offseason, 23 of 37, 338 yards, excuse me, one touchdown of the day. As Tyreek Hill literally did what Tyreek Hill does after doing stupid stuff. Seven receptions, 130 yards, one touchdown of the day, which was a 80-yard bomb. I mean, the dude was literally gone, and then his celebration was kind of hilarious as well. Devon A. Shane had the rushing touchdown on the day as the Miami Dolphins get the job done against the Jacksonville Jaguars, regardless of all the distractions. Up next is the, the Denver Broncos, excuse me, going into Seattle and losing to Seattle. We will talk Bo Nix for a little bit because everyone so high on Bo Nix. He threw two interceptions on the day. But he was 26 of 42 and 38 yards. Didn't have any touchdowns. He had a rushing touchdown on the day, though, which did would look really nice. It was a nice rushing touchdown, not going to lie there. Josh Reynolds led the team in receiving as well. And uh, they fall to the Seattle Seahawks on the road. Geno Smith, though, 18 for 25, 171 yards. Not a bad day for him. One touchdown, one interception. Kenneth Walker led the team in rushing with 103 yards and one touchdown on the day. Zach Carbonot caught the one offensive touchdown as JSN, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf all did pretty well. 77 yards for DK, 29 for DK, 77 for Tyler Lockett, excuse me. And then, of course, Kenneth Walker, or JSN, had 20, or 20 yards or so as well as they get the job done at home against Bo Nix. Like Up next is the Raiders at the Chargers. I'm not going to hit on that, but from what I saw, Justin Herbert looked really good. Lad McConkey looked really good. And they did struggle a little bit in the first half, but towards the second half, they finally got in rhythm as they do get the win there at home against the Las Vegas Raiders. Up next, you got the Dallas Cowboys. My Cowboys going into Cleveland and absolutely beating the snot out of Cleveland. We will look at Cleveland's side of things first because I got to mention something. Deshaun Watson was 0-15 on plays that were 15 yards or more passing-wise. He was 24-45. 170 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, which were just ugly. If you're asking me, Jerome Ford had a rushing touchdown on the day. And then, of course, Jerry Judy had a touchdown in garbage time as well. Looking at the Cowboys side of things, Dak Prescott, after becoming the highly, the most paid player in the NFL, which is regarded, uh, I like it, feel good about it. 19 of 32, 179 yards, one touchdown on the day. Zeke had a rushing touchdown on the day. Brandon Cooks had a touchdown on the day, but C.D. Lamb... Did lead the team in receiving at 61 yards as well. Defense had an interception from Kendricks. Trayvon Diggs was back. He had an interception as well as we get the job done. And then Brandon Aubrey had 15 of those 33 points as well. All I'm saying is they should have let Brandon Aubrey go for that 71-yarder. I think he would have made it because he made the 68-yarder. 
But it is what it is. Dallas gets the win as they are 1-0 on the year. Up next is Washington going into Tampa and falling to Washington. I will start with the rookie Jaden Nano. 17-24 in his NFL regular season debut. 184 yards on the day. He also had two rushing touchdowns and 88 yards rushing. Brian Robinson had a rushing touchdown. No passing touchdown for them. But the Buck side of things, Baker Mayfield played really well. 24-30. 289 yards, four touchdowns of the day. Solid work for him as Chris Godwin's uh, Jalen McMillan, Mike Evans caught two touchdowns of the day. Utilizing his receivers a lot. I like to see it. He's on my bench in fantasy. I may start him this week, but who knows as the Bucks get the job done against Jaden Daniels and the Washington Commanders. Up next, I'm going to react to two, both of these games here, the Sunday night and Monday night football game here in the same segment, and then close out this video. The Lions... And the Rams, Lions winning this game at home in overtime. It was a phenomenal game. I will say that Puka Nakua is now out for at least four weeks, so that is a big blow to the Los Angeles Rams. But regardless, the Rams played pretty good. Amon Ra did not look very good at all. I don't know what it was, but he just didn't have a good day for fantasy and for real life as well. The 49ers and Jets. I watched all of this game, and uh, this was a blowout win from the 49ers. I was... A little nervous that it wasn't going to be, but it was as uh, my kicker, Jake Moody, got me 17 points with 6 for 6 on the day, and I cannot thank him enough and that 49ers offense for putting up the amount of points that they did. Aaron Rodgers did get a free play touchdown, but that is kind of iffy. If you're just seeing the final score, you wouldn't know what happened in the game, but it is what it is as the 49ers get the win at home against the Jets. Start out 1-0 as they get back to the Super Bowl. And, of course, that is where I'm going to cut it for today's video. Once again, if you have not already, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. We do our best to post on this channel every single day. With that being said, I'm going to hop off get this edited so you all can watch it on time. Big 12 reactions coming up next and Big 12 predictions. And then tomorrow we will have ACC and then, of course, Big 10 on Thursday. And then Friday we will have SEC as well. But with that being said... I'm going to hop off and edit it. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.